Today we are going to discuss the concept of free time in drone metal. We're going to check out the intro section from Sons Agartha, which is a great example to help you understand how you can apply it in your own writing and riffs. And we're starting right now. All right, so what exactly do I mean when I say free time in drone metal? I'm going to read you the definition. Free time is a type of musical antimeter free from musical time and time signature. It is used when a piece of music has no discernible beat. Instead, the rhythm is intuitive and free flowing. So in English, what does that mean? Well, that means we've got a riff that has no real beat going on in the background. So you can vary the amount of time you sit on each note. You can allow chords to ring out and drone longer or shorter. But under it all, you've still got the same set of notes or pattern of chords going on. Like I said in the intro, Sons Agartha, at least the first five minutes, is a really cool example of this concept in play. You've got this big riff that repeats just over three times, uh, and it is certainly played in free time, where you've got the same chords being played throughout and the same pattern, but the length of time that you're going to sit on each chord is going to kind of vary, and you're not going to have a real beat to follow. It's really cool. I love to write drone riffs this way. You just kind of come up with a riff. You play the same repeating pattern of chords over and over with the same similar beat in mind, but you kind of be loose with it, allow things to to ring out longer if, you, if you're feeling it, or you can even cut them shorter as well and just kind of proceed with the riff. So in this lesson, I'm basically going to play that intro section to Agartha, uh, and you can kind of check out what I mean by free time. If you want to grab the tabs for this, as always, with this lesson and every other lesson on the channel, you can check them out at patreon.com slash doesitdoom. I'll have a link directly below this video for you to check them out. And before we get into it, I want to talk a little bit about the gear we're using, since people will be curious. I've got this First Act Custom Shop DC6 strung up with a set of StringJoy 13 to 64 strings, uh, Wound G on here. We are playing through a first generation Sun Model T. I'm plugged into the jumpered center input with the normal and bright volumes both set around six. The bass is cranked to 10, the mids around five, the treble and presence both at four, and then the master volume's right around four here. We are playing through a cabinet impulse response, and for that impulse response, I am using a 2x15 cab, very similar to the old Sun 2x15 that you'll see behind me. And so today we're gonna use three separate pedals to construct a pseudo life pedal style setup. First up, we've got the Does It Doom Hyper Coven Dirty Analog Octave Up. You'll see I run the clean blend on this pedal below noon. This is something you'll see on uh, O'Malley and Anderson's pedal boards if they're running a life pedal. The octave effect will be below noon. It adds that upper octave, but doesn't make it overwhelming. It allows you to maintain better sustain and just sounds really cool when played in drop A as we are strung up today. Next up, we've got our trusty rat. This is a reissue. I've kind of got all the controls set around two o'clock. And finally, for a little more punch, presence, and sustain, of course, we've got the Does It Doom Doomcaster. Again, set kind of around two o'clock. Just gonna kind of help those notes ring out a little longer for those extended drones. If you wanna check out any of those pedals, I'll have links to everything again below the video in the description. So Agartha is played in the key of B minor and uses the B Phrygian dominant scale. The root here is at the second fret. We've got a flat second here at the third fret. We've got a major third, which is what gives it that dominant feel here at the sixth fret. And then we've got a perfect fourth at the seventh fret. So the start of the long riff is signified by this transition from the major third to the perfect fourth. Throughout the demo section, when you see me do that, you'll know the riff has started to repeat. So we're gonna play through the riff once so you can see exactly how it goes, knowing that the idea is that you simply vary the duration of the chords as you play it to create your own feel and vibe. It goes like this.
And so the idea is simply that you can play that riff over and over and just allow certain chords to drone out longer and others to drone out for shorter durations, but always playing the same pattern of notes, just not really keeping any sort of beat in the background, feeling it out as it, I mentioned early on with a free flow intuitive type of feel.
remember to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell for more weekly Doom content. I want to send out a huge thank you to everyone who supports this channel over on Patreon with a very special thank you to all of our Rift Lord and Rift Messiah tier producers. For more content just like this, you can click the YouTube video directly below me. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, you can do so by clicking the round subscribe icon. So until next time, always remember, Tony Iommi is your friend.